Hello, and welcome to episode one of the Bulldog Blast podcast. This broadcast is produced by 7th and 8th graders at Hubleton Central School. I'm your host, Mrs. Madlin. In our first segment, Jacob discusses the recent pipe bomb incident that has been in the news. You're listening to the Bulldog Blast Podcast. I'm Jacob. Today we'll talk about the suspicious packages sent to Democrats and critics of President Trump. Several packages containing pipe bombs were intercepted. Some of the targets for the bombs are the Obamas, the Clintons, Maxine Waters, George Soros, former President Joe Biden, Robert De Niro, and CNN offices. The suspect, Cesar Sayak, was arrested. He's a 56-year-old resident that has a criminal history. Several packages were delivered to CNN headquarters, forcing the building to be evacuated. There was a list of around 100 other people to send bombs to in the van when he was arrested. I think that it is crazy that this man had a list of more people to send the bombs to, and he could have just killed them. Thank you, Jacob. In our next segment, Bella, Ashley, Lakin, and Hannah discuss Hurricane Willa. Today I'm going to be Ashley and Hannah and Lakin. Today we're talking about Hurricane Willa. Willa is on the move to Mexico City with the wind as strong as 116 miles per hour. Wow, that's fast. In theory, it might hit North Carolina, but how is that possible with such a far travel? The more and more water the hurricane consumes, makes it stronger and faster. Hurricane Willa has died down because when it hit land, there was no warm water sources. What category is Hurricane Willa currently in? The category of Hurricane Willa is currently at category four, but it was at five, then down to three, now back up to a four. How much rain are parts of Mexico going to get? Willa is expected to get six to 12 inches of rainfall with local amounts to 18 inches across portions of Western Mexico and one to three in Eastern Mexico. I wonder what makes a hurricane. I know. A hurricane begins as a tropical storm over the warm, moist waters of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans near the equator. As the moisture evaporates, it rises until enormous amounts of heat and moist air are twisted into the atmosphere. How did Hurricane Willa get its name? There is a strict procedure established by the World of Meteorological Organization for Atlantic hurricanes. There is a list of male and female names which are used on a six-year rotation. The only time that there is a change of a storm so deadly or costly that the future use of its name is on a different storm would be inappropriate. In the event of more than 21 tropical cyclones occur in a season, any additional storms will take names from the Greek alphabet. Don't people have to leave their homes? Yes, more than a thousand people have already evacuated. That's a lot of people. This is a wrap on the Bulldog Bulldog Blast Blast podcast. I hope you enjoy. Thank you, ladies. In our next segment, Dylan and Landon debate whether baseball or lacrosse is the better sport. Welcome to the Bulldog Blast Podcast. I am Landon, and I'm here today joined with Dylan. And I'm single. Very funny, Dylan. But today, we are doing, we are talking about sports. Today we'll be talking about debating which sport is better, baseball or lacrosse. Yeah, we are. So you play baseball, right, Dylan? Yes, I do, and you play lacrosse, right? Yes, I do. So tell me why you think lacrosse is better. Because you get to whip a ball at a goalie. Okay, well, I think baseball is better because everybody's part of the play. Yes, in lacrosse, everybody can be part of the play. The defense can run down and shoot and score. So can the middies, but because the middies can run the whole field, and the attack can too because the attack has to stay in the offensive zone. The, that's correct, but some kids on the team don't like to pass to the weaker players. Yes, that is true. But in order to have... A good team, you have to pass. That's correct, but explain to me why a lot of kids quit in the middle of the season. They quit because either they don't like the sport or they are kids who don't want to get hit or they don't want to run. In baseball, though, everybody does not know where the baseball is going, but in lacrosse, the teams have plays and the other teams will figure out what the play is. Yes, and in lacrosse, it is playmaking, strategy, and smartness. And, well, if you play lacrosse, well, you have common sense. So, in the cross, like, you can just...
throw it to any of your team at this age level. At like fifth and sixth grade and down and modify the cross, you just throw it to anybody who's open and try to score. But in high levels, like on JV and all the way up to professional and Olympic and Olympic lacrosse, there is plays at certain times. So it's not just like football where you have plays every time. It's like you do the plays at a certain time. So like right now you can just throw it to anyone that is open and just swipe it from other people. In baseball there's many strategies and tactics that you have to know. Also if you make a bad throw the other team has a good chance of scoring but in lacrosse they have to run through a, another line of defense. Yes, same in lacrosse. There's a turnover and if you pass you can get past the line of defense you don't have to worry about them. I do think lacrosse is a good sport but it should be fair to the boys and girls because they have to play at different rules. I do think girls lacrosse is very boring. Sorry to the girls but it's true because in girls lacrosse you can't hit the ball out of other people's sticks and you can't hit them either so it's boring because you can't touch each other. I think softball and baseball are a lot of like unlike lacrosse like boys and girls lacrosse. Yes they're but, you know, the lacrosse is better, though. <laughs> That's a fact, not opinion. And lacrosse has way more history than baseball does. This is true, but professional base baseball came out before professional lacrosse. Okay, well, you got me there because the sport of lacrosse was created in 1636 by the Indians. And professional lacrosse was created in 2001. This is true, but professional baseball came out before professional lacrosse. Yes, and when was the MLB created? The MLB was created in 1869, and when was ML created? Though MLB was made in 1869, the World Series was played. In, the first ever World Series was played in 1903. Yes, and the Cross has never had a championship or playoffs, but at least the MLL has an Olympic team. Baseball used to be an Olympic sport, but I believe it got removed due to a fight between Japan and Brazil. And in the in box lacrosse, you can have fights just like hockey. Thanks for listening to the Bulldog Blast podcast. That is all we had time for today. Stay tuned for our next exciting episode. And Dylan, thanks for coming on to our show, and I hope we can have you in this discussion again sometime. Thanks for having us. I'm sure we will. Thank you, Dylan and Landon. Our final segment today is an interview of Mr. Scott Sargent, who is a teacher in our school. This interview was conducted by Avery. You're listening to the Bulldog Blast Podcast. I'm Avery, joined today by Michaela Reed and Justin. Today we'll talk about our interview with Mr. Sargent. We are going to ask Mr. Sargent some questions about his early life as a child and that his life as an adult. What is your favorite childhood story? Oh boy, probably have a lot of them, but I, I, I don't know if I could pick just one story, but probably being chased by my brother home from the corner deli and throwing a pizza into the street was just one of many times that my brothers tormented me as a child. So that might be my favorite story of uh, him sneaking into a laneway and had previously set up the story by telling me that someone had been knocked off their bicycle or something and then sent me to get the pizza and then snuck down the laneway just to scare and torture me. So that's always been one of my favorites. Okay. Um, can you describe the neighborhood you grew up in? My neighborhood is the kind of neighborhood any kid would have loved to grow up in. Uh, every, there was probably 15 or 20 different kids somewhere around my age. If you weren't outside by 9 o'clock playing, you were probably going to be late for a game. And every single day, it was full of kids that were all treated the same. I had two kids in my neighborhood that were both mentally retarded that were treated just like anybody else and those guys still remain friends of mine to this day so I, I loved my neighborhood as a kid. Okay, um, what did your family spend money on? When I was young, um, if I remember correctly, like it, we didn't spend a lot of money on trips. We really didn't have a ton of money but we, we had a swimming pool and I remember 
like being able to get a pizza at the corner deli in Augensburg or even better than that for me because I still to this day am a Dairy Queen addict. Being able to go to Dairy Queen for lunch or dinner and play Pac-Man on the video games and listen to the jukebox, that was an awesome day for us. Okay, did you have any pets? I did, did not ever have a pet. My family did, but I was the last pet because by the time I got born, there was no more dogs or cats in the house. What did your family do for holidays? Uh, we are a very close-knit family, so for any holiday that we had into this day, we still make every effort to get together and celebrate as a family. So I remember being together with my grandparents, my brothers, and my sister, uh, and aunts, uncles, very family-oriented on holidays. Okay, what was your favorite gift you received as a child? I got a white 12-speed bicycle one year that I thought was probably the greatest gift I ever got. I, rem I still remember what it looked like and thinking that was the coolest bike I'd ever seen. Okay, um, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Uh, when I was a young kid, I thought I wanted to be an optometrist because I had to get glasses when I was like eight years old. Mm -hmm. And I remember the difference it made in my sight and couldn't believe it. That interested me. And then through college, uh, kind of shifted to maybe being a lawyer because I was an English major. Um, so those two things, and obviously they didn't turn out that way, but they were both things that interested me when I was younger. Okay, um, what big world events can you remember as a child? I remember going into the Boys and Girls Club, walking home from Kennedy School, walking in the Boys and Girls Club, and it being quiet for the first time I ever remember, because it's always crazy in there. And somebody had told me that President Reagan had just been shot. And I remember being like a kid in that room. And I didn't fully realize how important it was because I was, I was young. But I knew by the silence and the looks on everybody's faces that this was something huge. So that's definitely one of them. Um, did you ever get in trouble as a child? I did. I had a bad temper. Every time I lost a game, I got into a fight. And my problem was everybody in my neighborhood could beat me up. So every fight I got in, I pretty much lost, including by some girls in particular. And I just was very thankful that my father never stuck up for me in that regard and always said that I needed to learn, that they liked me and they wanted me to participate, but I needed to control that. And I think that's helped me a lot as I've gotten older. So I didn't get it, never disrespectful to adults or damaging anything, but just being a baby pretty much when I lost the game, that was my issue. Great interview, Avery. And thank you, Mr. Sargent. That concludes episode one of the Bulldog Blast podcast. We hope you'll stay tuned for our next episode.